Battle Control initialized. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Red Alert Gaming League Season 9, Minions. In the lower right-hand corner, playing as Ukraine in gold, we have Spetsnaz84. And in the upper left-hand corner, playing as Ukraine also, we have Isenithal. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, we've got a Soviet-on-Soviet-Ukraine mirror match. Let's go to the production tab. Spetsnaz leading with a barracks into a kennel. He's sitting on that kennel, though. That's really going to cost him some time. People have been telling me that I should zoom in a little bit more. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I just like to get a big picture view of things, you know? And here comes the engineer from Isenithal. He's going to capture that oil derrick uncontested. Spetsnaz staking out the hospital. Maybe there's toilet paper there. Isenithal taking an aggressive position near Spetsnaz's natural oil derrick. He's not going to be able to move in on that. Grenadier rush from Spetsnaz 84. I love how fast the Grenadiers run. It's like... You must be on the track team in order to apply to be a Grenadier. Isenthal's engineer moving in. Uncontested. He's taken the position well. The line of sight from the dog. Not doing a whole hell of a lot for Spetsnaz. Spetsnaz using his vetted soldier to do some scouting. I don't like that move. I would really like to see uh, the vetted soldiers kept alive. Isenithal doesn't have a uh, defensive structure queued up. This is going to hurt. I wonder why Spetsnaz didn't just go for... Oh, he's going for it. All right. I would have just gone right in. But he tipped him off just that extra second. And that's a sell. And that's the Grenadier team down. Honestly, without a whole lot of disruption. They just took a little bit too long to get out there. And uh, weren't able to get both power plants down. Isenithal losing his last vetted soldier. He's going to try to make something happen with this company of infantry. But with that dog there providing the line of sight, they're going to get wiped out. Good dog. Spetsnaz with control of the hospital. And Isenithal's engineer is just going to hang out for a while. Here's a flak truck from a Spetsnaz. And an engineer not far behind. Isenithal with 27.9 actions per minute to Spetsnaz 84's 18. Spets going in for the capture on the natural oil derrick. Isenithal just... Oh, he's ahead by about a thousand, actually. They were just lining up right there. So he's really making it work with that extra income from the oil derrick, making it possible to eco up even faster. So it kind of has a compounding effect. I like what he did there. But the problem with that move out is that it interrupts your structure production. He's got the eco advantage. I think he's trying his best to maintain that. Sizable infantry force from Isenithal.
Spetsnaz 84 still on four harvesters. I don't quite understand the purpose of that MCV move. Just a few seconds more and he could have parked it right at the ore patch. Maybe he's planning on doing that later. First tank out from Isenethal. Spetsnaz 84 with the line of sight advantage on the infantry thanks to the doggies. But you only need one dog, and he sends them in hot. That's what I don't like. The dogs are very useful as far as line of sight go, but you really have to catch infantry on the move if you're going to make the dogs effective as uh, offensive weapons. They just don't have the armor. I think they used to have more. Forces of Spetsnaz being routed from the center of the map, and the power and the uh, Tesla coil goes in cold. Probably powered down his uh, radar dome. Yep, no longer has radar sight, but he does have the Zappies. Make no mistake, Zappies are very scary. Even though it's one Tesla coil, and with that force. Isenethal definitely could have just overrun that testicle, but he's going in for the harvester and he gets it. Spetsnaz is playing at a power disadvantage. He is right on the line. 300 provided, 300 uh, used. <laughs> the Tesla coil goes down just in time for the power plant. We got an idle harvester from Isenethal. Maybe he meant to uh, migrate that harvester, but sort of forgot about it, maybe. The flak truck only a minor annoyance to the heavy tank. Isenethal on two expansions. Spetsnaz being uh, chased off of his first expansion. Isenethal still about 600 to 1,000 ahead in an income. Spetsnaz looking for a new expansion location. Heavy tanks camping the ore patch. And we've got a squadron of V2 rocket launchers here. This is going to get very interesting. Spetsnaz with a dispersed army. Uh, Isenethal really controlling the engagement. Let's see what these V2s do. Don't try to run them over with the V2s. That is way too close. Isenthal's force is not on hotkeys, just click and drag. Losing two tanks in the process. And he's going to lose that heavy tank too. That is the wrong pathfinding right there. He may even lose these V2s if he doesn't... Oh, never mind. He gets the infantry in position just in time. Line of sight from the uh, Yak tipping off the infantry flank onto the V tube's position. The 
black truck finding its mark. He's down to one out of three of the original V2s. I wonder if he's got more brewing. Nope. Looks like he's just cranking out tanks and riflemen. No more armor left in this uh, uh, contingent. Now a new heavy tank has joined the works. Isenethal with much better map control. A series of three Tesla coils here. Holy cow, you are not attacking into that. And the Yak attack plane's finding the snipe on some poor chap. Isenethal is still about 1,500 to 1,000 ahead in income. I think he's on to his second war factory now. No, his third. He's going to be producing one heavy tank about every 20 seconds or so. <clears throat> no rally point yet on that war factory. Spetsnaz appears to be taking the attack to the enemy, trying to find a weak point going around the flank and setting up a expansion to Spetsnaz's south of his first expansion. Isenethal uh, rotating his army. This is going to be a pretty major battle event, and I think I know who's going to win this. V2 is leading the way. Pulling his infantry back so that tanks are leading. I like that position now. Tanks providing armor and line of sight. He's got six heavy tanks going in. and four V2 rocket launchers. Spetsnaz is trying to find the angle on those V2s with the flak truck. And a yak attack plane from Spetsnaz coming in. Army's on the move. Not a lot of anti-air in the mix. Well, actually, no, there's a lot. There are quite a few rocket soldiers there. Spetsnaz now on nine harvesters and Isenthal. Spetsnaz calling it good game at 13 minutes and 41 seconds. 444 to 312. Let's go to the economy graph. Isenethal with the early captures of the oil derricks and uh, denying Spetsnaz access to his oil derrick uh, really set Spetsnaz behind in the early game. And when you're behind an eco in the early game, it just translates into the mid game um, completely. Uh, Spetsnaz did capture the derrick at one point, however, it was destroyed. And Isenethal must have taken a hit to his harvesters at some point. Let's go to the military graph. Both players about dead even until minute four and a half. Uh, Isenethal just with more troop mass and uh, heavy tanks, whereas Spetsnaz was favoring the flak trucks even into the later game. Um, several battle events you can see here and a really 
good uh, play by Spetsnaz, holding out all the way until minute 13 and 41 seconds. Let's go on to game number two. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Red Alert Gaming League Season 9 Minions. We have Isonathal playing as Russia and Spetsnaz84 playing as Russia. Let's go to the production tab. Spetsnaz a little bit ahead by about a quarter of a second. Let's see if he can keep that advantage. Dual Cold Front, I believe, is the name of the map, and I absolutely love this map. There are so many opportunities for flanks. It is so hard to play a uh, turtle defensive game. Also, there are no derricks to contest, and no hospitals, likewise. Um, it's all about army position. It's all about battle sense. Isonathal out the gate with a scout... Uh, Rifleman, and he's going to go for a Grenadier Rush as well. It's going to set him back a couple of bucks, but he seems to be microing his harvesters. Or not. Isonathal taking the flanks with arguably better uh, map control and awareness. He's got a scout force down here. He's got another couple of scouts making their way into the back of the base. Stationary infantry versus mobile infantry. Mobile infantry will always lose. Hopefully they don't cut in too early. the dogs from Spetsnaz coming in to sniff out the Grenadiers. Oh, this is not good. Isenthal may be able to hold that position. Nope. Providing a distraction for the Grenadiers. Spetsnaz is, oh, coming out with a flame tower. That was tight. Spetsnaz uh, popping a war factory. And now he's on to building his service depot. Only about a half second behind Isonathal. Isenthal trying to keep the pressure on Spetsnaz. Uh, both players beginning to stall cash-wise. Uh, Isenthal's on three harvesters, while Spetsnaz is also on three harvesters, just coming out with his third. Spetsnaz is going for a mine layer before his MCV. On smaller maps, sometimes that's a good idea, because... Uh, you know, bigger maps, you definitely want the line of sight provided by the expansions. However, on a smaller map, the even the infantry can cover ground quickly enough to provide line of sight. And it's a lot cheaper to produce infantry than it is to produce an MCV and the power plant, and yada, yada, yada. Special Forces operation on Spetsnaz. I guess that fits his name pretty well. I don't quite understand the point of having a dog and a flak truck. Uh, the dog does not provide as much line of sight as the flak truck, unless Spets is planning on using the dog offensively. Isenthal coming out with his first expansion, going MCV first right after his uh, 
service depot doing the same thing he did last game uh moving out his main mcv just prior to his first mcv coming out and that mcv that main mcv is going to run right into that rifle contingent and uh as i learned the hard way i think even last night a flak truck will destroy an mcv that is undeployed in short order you have got to deploy that mcv very quickly uh, Spetsna is not realizing the opportunity to block deployment of the MCV. He could have definitely destroyed it. He's going to try to get it with this last flak truck. It is down to a sliver of health. And just not able to do it. Wow, that is, um, that is literally five hit points left out of like 5,000. So close to destroying Isenthal's, uh, what was his, uh, expansion MCV. Isenthal's army on attack move, not falling for the dog tricks. Infantry is such a great way to attack Tesla coils. Likewise, tanks are a great way to attack uh, flame towers. Forces of Isenthal being uh, routed and destroyed. Isenthal not pulling the trigger on that uh, rocket trooper contingent. He might have been able to snipe a, uh, a harvester like that. Trying to create a distraction with that flak truck. Isenethal with uh, expansions on both his flanks. And we got a tank battle. Three on one, that's not fair. Oh well. Isenthal's army looking for a flank that's open. They might find it. No rally point on Spetsnaz's war factory. Out with his first expansion. Isenthal on two expansions. One of which does not yet have a refinery. He doesn't need it though, he's floating 2k. And what is this? Oh, that's the mine layer. That's wonderful. Spetsnaz is mining Isenthal's uh, ore patch for his expansion. Let's see if that mine layer can find its way back to base. I don't think so. Isenthal's got it sniffed out and those heavy tanks are just whittling away at it. This army is not going to be able to hold position. Those tanks are in a good spot. And if Isenthal moves in for the crushes, tanks finding decent crushes and taking out those flame troopers. Tanks nearly impervious to flamers. Mine layer goes out again, but it's got to go right past those rocket troops. Down to a sliver of health, but there's no defensive structures whatsoever at Isenthal's uh, second expansion. Oh, that was nice. Spetsnaz's uh, army here looking for a... Well, they're just camping the ore patch now. Out of position, in my opinion, but Isenthal not repairing his heavy tank. Maybe I'm being too critical. I should talk about the good things that they're doing. Uh, Isenthal with... And Spetsnaz, about dead even in income this game. Isenthal about to come out with a yak attack plane, and Spetsnaz with a Tesla coil in his pocket. About to go radar tech. Serious engagement here for the center of the map while Spetsnaz is uh, 
secondary army comes into the rescue. Chasing off the V2s, not finding any kills on them, however. And if Spets orders a stop move here, that plane is dead. Too late. Betson has his army being wiped out by the standing line of Isenthal. That meat shield on stop mode is, uh, no joke. Oh, and the tank just barely not getting away. Spetsnaz now on radar tech. Both players with good map control at this point. And the V2 rocket launcher is coming in. Wow. That was a great hit. combination of infantry and V2s in a stationary formation is uh, quite formidable, especially when you're using a natural barrier like this where the army is not able to advance directly into the V2s. They're just kind of held off at the max range of the V2. Not the best V2 shot. That was a lot better. And a counter V2 from Spetsnaz. Tank going in deep, looking for the target. And the tank is not going to survive to tell that tale. Finding his mark on the V2, however. Spetsnaz with his yak attack plane. He knows the army's occupied. And he's going to be able to... Oh... Quick stop command from Isenthal, and that yak is down. Spetsnaz on nine harvesters now, uh, with a distinct income advantage. but also starve for cash, whatever he's building. Spetsnaz has five production lines going. Dual coils from Isenthal. That is very difficult to advance into, even with infantry. And Tesla troops coming out from Isenthal, going full radar, or full uh, tech tree for the Russians. This might be the army that wins the game. I don't think that that one lone test coil is going to be able to stem, stem this tide. Isenthal, however, pulling back. Redistributing his forces so that the tanks lead the way. Is he just going to leave them right there? Oh dear. Pop goes the weasel. Isenthal losing a harvester to uh, Spetsnaz's mines. And we got MiGs, ladies and gentlemen. Harvester snipes by the MiGs. What's he down to? Seven harvesters now. Isenthal at five harvesters. And there's that army making its offensive. He's going to let his troops move in range before taking out that Tesla coil. That was very good. If 
this V2 rocket launcher from Spetsnaz can find some good marks, that's going to totally change things, but Isenthal has a huge army, and so far both those shots have missed completely. Tank's gonna find the crush. And is it gonna find that V2? No. Spetsnaz calling it good game at 14 minutes, 55 seconds. 646 to 528. Let's go to the economy graph. Both players about even throughout most of the game. Um, yeah. I think Isenthal just with better map coverage, um, covering his flanks a little bit more and uh, maybe going heavier in the infantry, which on this map really is not a bad idea because uh, stationary plays are so important. Going radar tech early and really leveraging the V2 rocket launchers. Um, you know, the V2s on a map like this are difficult to counter, to say the least. You've got pockets all over the place where they can just uh, hide and uh, fire their missiles into the infantry formations. Very difficult to find a flank on uh, mobile units on this map. Ironically, although it's much easier to find a flank on the uh, structures on a map like this. Anyway, both games going to Isenthal, Red Alert Gaming League, Season 9, Minions. Battle control terminated.